to today's live stream. This is actually number 20. Yes, we've been doing them uh, every single week for the last four weeks on the trot. So hopefully you guys have, number one, noticed a big difference in the quality of them uh, going back to those original ones. Hopefully they've been more and more useful for you by adding in those extra bits and pieces and uh, you're really getting a lot out of them. And if you do find these live streams really useful, then please do feel free to share them with people. So hit the subscribe button if you're watching us on YouTube and if you're watching on Facebook, like and, and follow the page for the Mayfair Clinic because uh, we're going to continue to do these um, on an ongoing basis really indefinitely. So um, it's our way of reaching out to you guys and providing you with additional information, additional help, whether you're a member in our Back in Shape membership site or whether you're a patient that comes to the clinic. If any questions that we get either in these comments or elsewhere, we'll put them in for the next live stream. And remember, at the every, at the end of every single one of these live streams, we're going to do a Q&A. So if you've got any questions, do post those in the, the description below because Lara is able to read those out uh, to me uh, and we'll go through those questions at the end. So for today... What are we talking about? We're talking about trap nerves. This is something that is um, a bit of a, a problem at times because it's misunderstood or, or misphrased. And that, from a patient point of view, leads to, to quite a bit of frustration when we're trying to get to the, the crux of the matter. Uh, quite often, they're not necessarily articulated appropriately. So in today's live stream, we're going to cover what they are not, what a, what a trap nerve is not. Then we're going to go through and cover what they actually are. And then we'll go through some examples of where they are or can be and we'll get, make use of the whiteboard behind me and also our good friend the spine as well to just help you appreciate a little bit more uh, what is a trap nerve what makes up a trap nerve how can you make it worse why sometimes a certain exercise is actually okay even though they irritate things a little bit um, so hopefully you can make uh, make use of this knowledge and uh, really deal with your trap nerves if you've got them or if you do have them in the future more effectively so um, without further ado what are they not so if we just cut back to me um, what are they not? Trap nerves, quite commonly, that or the most common one that I see, is actually drawn out on the board back here. If I bring that just into view, you might have seen this if you tuned into one of the live streams earlier, I think it was last week, uh, where we had this example in particular. But this guy here, so back of the head, right or left side, and we get this pain around here, and sometimes it can be incredibly sharp. Uh, and shooting right to the corner of this is the shoulder blade here that you can see on the on the on the uh, screen here, and um, it's that sharp pain when we move the neck. Oh my, my nerves trapped, and it's trapped down here, and this this leads perfectly into what I was mentioning earlier with the reason or one of the reasons that these things are so problematic is because if you think that the problem is here and you go to your, your practitioner and they start treating that area because they say okay we'll treat that area or if you go to your practitioner and they say well i'm going to treat where it's coming from it's going to create that disconnect in terms of you're saying one thing but they're doing something else and it doesn't really make sense and one of the reasons for this is that much like sciatica in the lower in the lower back the trap nerve commonly occurs up here there's no nerve that is trapped. No one could name a nerve that's actually trapped here. We might have muscle spasm and referred pain that's happening here, but the trapped nerve is what we really want to treat, or the cause of that trapped nerve, which invariably in this example is going to be up here in the middle portion of the neck, and it often causes a spasm in a muscle called levator scapulae, and that muscle attaches right in here and can get a little bit unhappy, start pulling on the bone, and also it attaches into the middle portion of the neck. So it, it's very, very common one that people refer to trap nerves in and around the shoulder blade region and there's nothing that can be trapped there uh, it, it's not it's, it's not technically accurate and and indulging that process as such leads to more confusion rather than a resolution in the problem so if we if we zoom into what the trap nerve actually is now it can happen anywhere along the spine that's the main areas nerves can get trapped there are other examples where nerves can get trapped or influenced one of one of the areas is going to be in the elbow just in here we've all experienced that when we've lent on it and you're literally putting pressure directly onto the exposed ulnar nerve which runs or part of the ulnar nerve that runs down the inside of our elbow so that's one area, but patients don't come in complaining of that because you just lift your arm up and stop trapping the nerve. The other area is just behind your fibula, which is just behind the knee on the outside of the knee. And that area, again, we won't cover that because it's, it's generally because you've put pressure on there or you've been hit and that might give you that sort of funny bone feeling where you actually literally hit that nerve. Most nerves run in safe places through soft tissues and there's other examples where they run, for example, down the humerus here, very, very close to the bone. It can get 
caught there if you would have a fracture of the arm. But if you're watching this video, none of those things will apply to you when we're talking about trapped nerves, so we can kind of disregard them. The main area these nerves do, however, get irritated, trapped or compressed is as they leave the spinal canal. And this can happen in the neck, leading to pain like I just described on the whiteboard in, a, in an area that's away from where the nerve is actually being compressed, irritated uh, or just bothered. They can commonly happen in the ribs here. If we dislodge one of the rib, joint, rib joints, and I don't mean pop it out, but we strain the rib joint, it creates inflammation. That inflammation can irritate what's called the intercostal nerve, which runs out and round, uh, and that can create some sharp type pain. And then down obviously in the lower back, we've all heard of the sciatica, whereby the roots of the sciatic nerve down the bottom here get caught, influenced, irritated, trapped, if you will, and they can send pain down the leg. Now they can give you pain in the area that they're trapped, or they can give you the referred pain only, or they can give you some amalgamation of both. But those are the main areas that those nerves get trapped. And sometimes you'll also see if, we, if you've gone on for a little bit longer and you've had some MRI imaging, etc., then they might talk about exit foraminous stenosis or lateral recess stenosis, which basically means a hole is smaller than it should be. And that's what's trapping the nerve, so to speak. So it's just a, a, we need to be specific with the layman's terms that we're using as best as possible. So if we take the neck example, one of the common uh, movements that really bothers someone if they've got a, a sort of a trapped nerve is going to be extension or just rotation. And the reason for that, I'll get into in more detail on the whiteboard in a moment, is but you can see where these nerves come out. If we look at the lower back, because it's just easier to see, there is a finite hole where the nerve exits and that finite hole is bounded by a bony margin and if we've got any other issues like uh, degenerative disc disease or other dehydration or herniations in the in the discs then the hole the narrow canal gets smaller because the disc it also provides a separating function to keep that hole nice and large which is why if you have severe degeneration in any of the spinal joints you can increase the chances of trapping that nerve as it leaves so if we jump back onto the whiteboard Again, art is not my strong point, but hopefully you guys will get the, uh, the point on this if I just or orchestrate, orientate that correctly. We can see an example in here, and what happens is something gets injured around here, and there's lots of structures in this region. You've got uh, the facet joint, the facet capsule, those can be caught. You've got the discs, obviously, the salves, and other small ligaments that are in this region, but any number of those can be irritated, and you've probably heard us time and time again referring to uh, treating your spine injury um, or, or strained back as a strained ankle, and you, we all know how much that ankle will, sw will swell up if you even have a minor strain let alone something more serious, it balloons you know, tremendously. Well, if that happens in that space, we've got an enclosed space, it's going to create trouble, even if it is a minor injury. So as inflammation builds up here, judged by the white, uh, sorry, the, uh, the red marker and the orange in the middle, this little dot here is the uh, little spinal nerve. The reality is the space is a lot smaller than that. It's a lot tighter around that nerve, but this just gets the point across. As inflammation builds up in here, it puts pressure on that nerve. And if we do movements of extension or rotation left and right, it changes the size of this hole and therefore decreases the space in certain ranges. And that immediately puts a direct pressure on the nerve as it's going through that little hole. And then you get all of a sudden your pain down here in the shoulder, for example, if we're talking about the neck. Um, you get that shooting pain, that sharp pain that patients will often vocalize as a trapped nerve. And it is that you are trapping it more, but the trapped nerve isn't necessarily the problem. We can't treat the trapped nerve. How do you untrap it? You have to treat the problem that has led inflammation to build up and trap that nerve. You can treat it very easily if it's in your elbow by just lifting the elbow up and then the, 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 the pressure goes away. But invariably, it's an injury in here that's actually caused that nerve to be trapped by excess inflammation or irritated. And when you move that neck, for example, in the case of the neck or lower back or ribs, as you move or breathe, that creates that sharp pain because that nerve is being directly irritated. So in terms of dealing with a trapped nerve, we need to deal with the cause of that inflammation that's occupying that space. And Invariably, we talk about this a lot, mainly because it's applicable to a large, a large percentage of the population. We're sat down for long periods. So if we're talking about the neck, for example, a lot of people sat slouched over the computers or sat, we've had numerous people, we were speaking to someone who had a uh, trapped nerve, who, who actually 
sparked this video or gave us the, the, the motivation for this particular video. And he said, oh, it's really bad when I lie in bed watching TV um, or something along those lines. Is that it? I went on, on the sofa watching TV like this for long periods. And the reason for that is that we're massively flexing the neck. It's not supposed to be in this position for long periods. And if you watched, I think it was yesterday or the day before's live stream, that compression through the front part here creates irritation and inflammation and worsens the injury on the back part of the disc here and the other structures on the back here, which fills this space at where the nerve's coming out, making your trap nerve more trapped as a result of it. And in fact, we want to straighten back up. Now, the reason that it's difficult and makes the pain a little bit worse when we do try and straighten back up is because if the hole has been artificially enlarged in here by our bad posture, to try and alleviate the pain, but we've been making the problem worse. When we go and bring it back down to a normal space, there's an inordinate amount of inflammation there, and just as soon as you bring it back, you squeeze that inflammation, it squeezes the nerve, and creates trouble. So a nice combination of a little bit of icing to reduce inflammation, avoidance of getting in those positions in the first place, because they become very difficult then to get out of those positions without pain, uh, and a better way of using your body on a daily basis will really, really help with dealing with this trap nerve, particularly in the neck. And the reason I'm going into more detail in the neck is because they're commonly referred to or misunderstood in the neck. In the lower back, people tend to understand the sciatica a little bit better and won't make quite as many of these same mistakes, although there are still mistakes down there as well. But that's really what we need to be doing. We need to deal with the source of the trap nerve, which is an injury to the neck, for example, in this one we're talking about, or the ribs, I'll get to those in a moment, and realign it so it's got more balance to it, stand with good posture, sit with good posture, get some ice on the neck to reduce that inflammation. And this will work for the majority of people because the majority of people, like I said, have that bad posture, especially now whilst we're being uh, in lockdown and we're struggling with uh, a normal day-to-day -day lifestyle and being as mobile and as active as we otherwise could be. Now, when it comes down to um, the ribs themselves, unfortunately, the ribs are very, very difficult. The thoracic spine doesn't have much in the way of movement to it. It's difficult to actually influence that, but the good news is most rib problems will clear up on their own, given half the chance. Working on postural exercises to open things back out a little bit more so there's less sustained stretch on these rib joints. You can see what happens through here as we flex around like that. It opens out and puts more strain on all of these areas. So by minimizing that, by having a good posture, perhaps stretching out the chest a little bit more. We can realign the thoracic spine so it decreases the day in day out stress on those rib joints in particular so that they can calm down, start to heal properly and the trap nerve in the middle back and the, giving that radiating pain that sometimes comes around the front here will start to subside as well. Ribs generally heal quite quickly if they're managed well um, and there's not a lot you can do other than reduce inflammation and just try and allow the body to heal naturally just because of the rigidity and the, the locked up nature of the thoracic spine and the ribs that are attached. When we get down to the lower back, the advice is very, very similar to the neck. We've got the same fundamental issues. We should have a nice smooth curve going through that lumbar spine to absorb shock. And commonly it's when that curve gets reduced and we start putting excess pressure through these discs that we get the same phenomenon happening. As we reduce that that curve, we open it, you can see particularly here because I'm putting a good pivot through there, we see this hole opens out loads and that allows more than normal inflammation and fluid to build up in here. So when we try and stand back upright, it squeezes back to normal, but that creates a degree of pain. So we want to try and never get into that position where we're slouching for long periods if we've got a trapped nerve in the lower back so we don't have to experience that discomfort. One thing to be very mindful of is quite often exercises like knee hugs, etc are quite relieving for trapped nerves in the lower back because they feel like they're stretching this area out. We've have covered this numerous times before on, on the podcast, uh, sorry, not the podcast, on the, the live stream um, with regards to why these exercises aren't good. So go back and check uh, those videos out, but we want to avoid that forward bending. It's not helping. Remain upright, do the right sort of exercises for your lower back and that will recover as well. But fundamentally, a trapped nerve is a sign that in sort of, uh, in summary, a trapped nerve is a sign that something in and around this region of the spine is going to be injured. It is invariably where the nerves leave that spine, what's called the exit foramina, or the lateral recesses, those regions of the spine is where those nerves can be trapped. And it may or may not give symptoms further away from the spine, but we need to treat the cause of the inflammation here that's trapping the nerve. We want to try and maintain a good posture in the neck, the middle back, and the lower back. And if you do that correctly, things should clear up quite nicely. We've got tons of other videos on um, 
relief exercises for neck for the neck so look at some of those to help you in conjunction with what i've just mentioned if it's a neck problem if it's a lower back problem then we've got our back in shape membership site which will give you all the exercises you need to deal with that so you can head over there and and, and start some of those because those are the right exercises to deal with this sort of problem uh, that's pretty much it for today's video so thanks for watching and we'll go over to any questions that we have yes uh, so a question about the neck pain yep because uh, it can be so wearing if you yeah. do have neck pain it really takes it out of you you know during the day uh, is there any particular exercise or stretch that you'd recommend that, that people do at home so the the question was with regards to neck pain and it can be really wearing on 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 the individual if you're suffering with it because it just kind of doesn't go away we, we move our necks so much um the, the main exercises i would suggest are, are really twofold we've got to get the ice on the neck because that's got to reduce the inflammation down you're very aware of your neck it, it what's called the somatosensory cortex which is how we see our body we see our hands this area as very very large so we have a good awareness of what's going on in those regions so we're going to feel that neck pain a lot more getting infl getting the inflammation down calming it down with ice not heat is really really important keeping that head over the shoulders and then the band exercise that we've discussed before is a great one. Gently mobilizing those joints so they don't stiff, stiffen up and lock up into ex an extension position. Not doing chin tucks because that would be a bad exercise for the overwhelming majority of people, particularly ladies uh, we see more so. Um, and then also using that rolled up towel to reduce the pressure and just restore the nice natural curve through that spine and take pressure off what's essentially causing that, that really stiff neck. Okay, brilliant. Uh, Mariana's just asked if you could just speak a little bit more slowly while you're going through the explanation. Will yes, you, sure. Was there any part of the explanation she'd like me to recap? Um, I'm not sure. Maybe she will. Uh, maybe she will, she'll, she'll mention it. Um, another question here on Instagram: back pain is killing me. Um, okay. That's all. That's all they've said. I'm guessing you know if you could. Yeah, I mean, the, the best thing if the back pain's bothering you, definitely we've got the the back and shape membership site. So the link, the bio, the, the link will be in the bio. Check it out. Like the basic part will help you if you have back pain, but please do it correctly. Follow the instructions, and I would really encourage you to pay attention to the the initial segments of information that's on there, the videos that help you understand back pain, because a lot of people are doing a lot of things wrong consistently, and just the abstinence of those bad things really, really helps. And if you are doing lots of bad things and you just try and do the exercises which are good, the, you're doing so much bad stuff that the exercises aren't gonna make an impact. So you have to get rid of some of the bad stuff and focus then on, the, on, on adding in the good things as well. So I definitely recommend go there. It, it's helping people all the time every day yeah, so yeah. try it um just back to mariana she said i have neck pain okay uh, and and uh, it's only on the left side ice mm. i she hasn't used ice yet yeah um so just just a little bit more slowly then um it's very very common for it to be on one side because it's one of these little holes that's being blocked up there are Ex, um, exceptions to this where it can affect both sides but in your case it's quite clear that it's going to be just affecting one of these nerves giving you those symptoms on the one side the exercises that we've mentioned again are, will, are going to help that please try and avoid using um, using heat on the shoulders heat will feel nice even if you don't have pain heat feels nice and when you're worn out sort of mentally from having uh, a consistent problem up here in the neck it can just feel nice but i would really encourage you to use the ice for no more than three to five minutes don't worry if you feel a little bit stiff immediately afterwards that's okay you're going to be reducing the inflammation down here the muscles are going to stiffen up a little bit but after three to five minutes once you've taken the ice off so three to five minutes after doing the three to five minutes of ice you're going to find that the, the temperature comes back to normal and you'll be okay please avoid and this goes back to the same question on back pain please avoid um, doing any of those forward bending exercises that commonly are done these ones because those will although they'll feel nice at the time of doing them they will make you worse pay attention to how you're using your body on a daily basis with regards to um, on the sofa or on the laptop with, with your chin looking down in mitigating those things by or mitigating against that by stopping those sorts of activities and being more upright and good postured will really really help reduce that trap nerve on the one side in conjunction with the ice a little tip with icing um, if you get the ice pack, I don't have one around, but if you place it on your neck, don't walk around holding it like that because that will make your neck worse. Um, yeah, that'll do. Yeah. Um, so this is my little ice pack, uh, ankle strap. Put it, put it in a towel or a band and then just hold it there. 
this is so much better. We see pe people sometimes walking around with, with ice packs on their neck like that, and you're basically twisting the neck, doing exactly what I told you not to do. So you can just hold like this for five minutes or so, and then you just kind of take it off afterwards. You can take it off and it's done. So if you're using ice, do it that way, because that will make a big difference. And please don't go, oh, the ice actually really helped, and then do it for 20 minutes. That, that's not right, just five minutes, but repeatedly through the day. And just for the sake of recapping, because we may as well while we're here, we mentioned the towel exercise for you to do last, just before you do the icing. So if we go through the routine again, got an exercise band, and this will, will feel a little bit uncomfortable to start with, but it'll get easier. And we got it around the middle of the neck, and we're just gently pulling forwards and looking up. Like this here, just nice and gently. We're not doing that, okay? That's just gonna be really bad for you. So nice and gently, you'll find that, that movement will start to return. Once you've done about 15 repetitions of that gently, you're gonna go and lie. This is a little bit too large on a rolled up towel under the base of your neck and lie back over there. And that's gonna help take pressure off the discs, off the ligaments, off the muscles in and around that neck. So you get a bit of respite. Then when you get off there, you get off slowly and you use that ice on the back of the neck and walk around with good posture. And you do that three times a day. You can do it more times a day if you wish, but doing it consistently, I don't know how long this has been going on for, but if it has been going on for a little while, then doing this consistently over a good few days will really improve things if you also make those changes and stop doing some of the things that I've mentioned, like looking down and those sorts of things. And uh, if you need to rewatch this, it'll be up um, for replay as soon as we finish the video. So don't worry about that. Awesome. Thank you Any other questions? <clears throat> yes, uh, Ollie has asked, are nerve glide exercises good to do for trapped nerves? Um, I would suggest no. I'm assuming that those will be, I'm not 100% familiar with those, but I'm going to assume that's very similar to, um, <laughs> oh, there's a sciatica, there's a sciatica one. Um, flossing, nerve flossing for sciatica way. The, I mean, you guys can probably answer this question before I even get to the answer. But the position that you essentially get in when you do this, this is for the lower back, but the same is true of the neck. You sit like that, you slouch really badly, look down, and then you straighten your leg like that. Now what that is doing, yeah, the nerve flossing, if you go and Google after watching this, go and Google nerve flossing for the lower back, um, which essentially I think is what, what Ollie you're referring to. Um, that does not sound you said, yeah the yeah. Okay. yeah no don't do that <laughs> why do you need to do that what 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 you always need to ask and we try and do that's why we do these live streams is why are you doing that just think about it what, what are you trying to achieve by doing that and the process of doing that how many things have we already covered that you're going against those concepts by doing that getting into that slouch position flattening the arc compressing the discs bending forwards even further with the head and then straightening the leg, etc., to try and floss the nerve out. Um, it doesn't sound like a great thing to me. And if you think you might have some degeneration in the lower back, some nice sharp osteophytes that are coming out right here, do you really want to be flossing that nerve, grating it on those uh, osteophytes or those bony growths? Probably not a good idea. So definitely not a big fan of that exercise in the slightest. And someone will need to do a good amount of explaining to persuade me otherwise. Please leave those alone. Do the other ones, they work better. Okay, uh, another question here. Is moving the head in a circle a good movement so, like, exercise? That sort of thing. I, if you've got a uh, neck issue, I would not do that. Um, that being said, some general rotations left and right, looking up, looking down, tilting left and right to keep it mobile whilst you have a healthy neck as an avoidance thing would be perfectly fine. Moving joints through their range of motion is okay. But I would again, um, take it a step further to try and be more specific and say when I'm moving my neck doing those those sorts of movements what do I not do enough of for example um, if I'm set like this all day then I'm probably already doing more than enough flexibility forward so I should probably focus on the backwards the left the right and the tilt and the tilt there's no need to do extra flexion quite equally if you're a ceiling painter and you're like that all day you probably don't need to do <laughs> The extension as much and maybe doing the others might be a little bit more appropriate but chances are if you are a ceiling painter you're probably just offsetting all the bad stuff you're doing on your smartphone so i'd be balanced with that one um, but generally a lot of people do a lot of this touching the toes bent chucking the chin to the chest for mobility that range of motion we do more than enough of that on a daily basis in current society especially now with the lockdown so the other ranges would be perfectly acceptable i would suggest doing one range at a time rather than the rotations if you 
have a little bit of neck trouble but if you have no neck trouble and you're just doing it to keep mobile then I don't see any reasonable problem with that it's fine any others love oh yes Marianne has come back uh, she's had it for a long time it comes and goes please uh, can I have your opinion on a headstand yoga pose does it help or not okay this is a really good one and shoulder stands well, I'll apply I'll do answers for both of them um, so our lumbar spine is built to take weight can you see how big the vertebra are? This lumbar spine is designed to carry probably the lighter half of our body weight, arguably, maybe a little bit, maybe maybe 50% of the body weight, and you see how big it is. Now look at how big your neck is, and the bones here are. And what we're asking to do is, this: these bones are designed, and all the supporting structures, you've got to remember the ligaments, the muscles, etc., are designed to take this weight, to take half of your body weight here. If we put this upside down, we now have these tiny little neck joints which are more flexible and uh, less stable and substantially smaller, carrying probably 95% of your body weight. I really wouldn't be keen on doing headstands uh, in yoga, definitely not if you've got a neck problem. Um, for that reason alone, when, when, when you go through that, and explain that to someone, it, it starts to become obvious. Now, I will say that I know that certain cases, when we're doing a headstand, we've got we're putting pressure through the shoulder, sorry, through the elbows, etc. Not a yoga person, but I do know enough to know a little bit about that. And we're putting, we've got other pressure points. But I would argue that even if it's only one third of the weight is going through your head, I don't see the advantage the advantage of doing of being in this position um, if there is a propensity for pressure to be coming up through the neck knowing that m the overwhelming majority of neck problems are compression I really wouldn't be doing that and then if we take the headstand arguably you could say that's worse because the headstand you're actually going to be all the way around here and unfortunately um, we see exactly the same problem in, in more yoga type gymnastics type people with regards to their neck alignment uh, time and time again and there are some of the people that have the worst neck alignments um, and, and, and when they're young and healthy and fit they manage to compensate for that by good flexibility and good strength but as they get a little bit older you really tend to tend to see those vulnerabilities being exploited a little bit so I'd really please encourage you to do the exercises that we mentioned consistently maybe for you it's going to take a little bit longer to get some some real results with that but consistently three times a day avoiding some of those other things we've mentioned and uh, some of the other forward bending postures that you might do during yoga with the neck and uh, you really should see some improvements and the icing brilliant she agrees with you awesome <laughs> hope that was helpful <laughs> sorry to go off on a little bit of a rant but at least they got the explanation and it's the explanation behind the advice that's really the important part because that's how you can then decide whether you feel that it's a valid answer or just a lot of rubbish so hopefully you feel it's the former and um, and that's been really helpful so i would really encourage you guys to ask questions uh, because it makes it more interesting keeps me on my toes as well and uh, until next time have a great weekend hopefully you've enjoyed today's live stream and if you did find it helpful please please do uh, consider subscribing to the YouTube channel or just giving us a like or sharing it with someone that you think might feel, uh, get, get value out of it. Thanks thank for watching for and thank you very awesome. much for the questions. Have a great day. Bye guys.